Hello, you might have seen the videos I've done previously on the Aero range from Roland, the uh, TR8, the TB3, the VT3, and uh, we've all been waiting for the fourth of the four to actually arrive, and this is the System 1, and this is a plug-out synthesizer, plug-out, I still can't get my head around what that's all about at the moment, but there's loads of videos on YouTube that's going to tell you all about that. I mean, I don't demonstrate things, I just take them apart. Anyway, my friends at GAC here uh, have kindly uh, it lent me something to show you guys. So, let's get inside and have a look, shall we? As you see, it comes in this wonderful cardboard box. How can anyone get excited over a cardboard box? No, but it is nice, isn't it? Uh, all the boxes for these things are quite nice. But... Uh, I just want to... Oh no, it's got sticky tape on it. Come on. I'm just excited to get inside it and see what we've got. Mmm, pretty. Well, the uh, typical leaflet instruction manual. No, I won't go into that again. Well, let me just move this out of the way and we'll fire this thing up and have a look at it. Okay, I've been waiting for this for a long time. It, uh, it just looks so nice. It looks so pretty. I want one. <laughs> quick look at all the buttons and things although like I said on YouTube there's plenty of demonstrators on there that do brilliant uh, demos uh, the LFO section uh, oscillator 1 and 2 mixers pitch filters amps uh, there's uh, sine wave square wave sawtooth all sorts of things there's, there's a lot here that you can play with there's even built-in effects there's reverbs and delays etc etc there's an arpeggiator in there uh, and uh, sounds nice there's different i think it's uh, four note polyphony but that, that's its own standalone synth there's a standalone synth there but what you get when you buy this you will get uh the sh101 also which is the plug out thing that i can't quite get my head around yet but i'll figure it out uh yeah it's very nice on the back we have the uh, typical left and right outputs, uh, pedal for control and hold, good old MIDI 5 pin DIN still going, nice to see that, uh, USB, there's also USB audio that runs out of there as well, and your DC input. And fortunately Roland saw fit that it uses posi drives, so let's get inside it and have a look. Alright, I've taken out all the screws, apart from the screws for the actual keyboard. Keyboard feels a bit... it's, it's, it's quite a, a, a sort of thin keyboard. They're full-size keys, but uh, there's not a lot of travel on there. Oh, I don't suppose there needs to be. It's a synth, not a piano. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, pretty. What's inside? I think what I'm going to do now is put on my anti-static uh, wristband and then we'll start unplugging these things and getting it apart. So bear with me. Right, let's get back into this thing. Now look, I've even put my special cotton gloves on because I don't want to leave any fingerprints inside here. Not that the police are looking for me or anything, but. Let's uh, keep it as pristine as possible. Ah! His fingerprints are already there on the copper! That must have been from whoever's actually put this thing together. Right, okay. Now, obviously, I hate these little piddly bastard things, but these must be disassembled. <laughs> well, first impression, well, yeah, it doesn't look like there's a lot in there, but there doesn't need to be nowadays. I bet there's a load of uh, 
processors and things going off underneath these boards. Oh, okay. Uh, this is your uh, pedal control and your headphone and audio outputs there. This little amps there, little op amps and things. And all your tiny capacitors everywhere. And this looks like the, the board, the whole board for the SH-101. Cool, blimey. I mean, that's, that's tiny. Right, I'm going to unscrew that and get that up. I don't think there's going to be much on the other side of these. I mean, we'll flip them over anyway. But these are just going to be control gear and, and, and buttons and lots and lots of green LEDs everywhere, basically. But yeah, your SH-101 is... That's going to be it there. So, let's get this apart, shall we? Okay. Let's have a look on the back here. Uh, there's some uh, memory. I can't quite read how much memory that is on the number. I can't get the light right. But yeah, I mean, that's the same memory that they're using in the TR8 and the TB3. A little bit of memory there. Uh, Where's, where's the magic? Where's the magic? Come on. You can see by all these decoupling capacitors everywhere in these sort of square configurations. That's giving you a clue that on the other side of those, on the other side of this board, there's a couple of FPGAs which are probably underneath there. FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays. Now, unfortunately, there is a copper shield. And the copper shield goes over the top and they have been soldered down at the corners this is not mine it doesn't belong to me i've only got it on loan to do this video so i'm not going to start on soldering these i'm very sorry about that but as you can see there's two fpgas underneath there which are you know the, the processors that's doing all the uh, work and everything and they'll be performing that analog circuit behavior the acb that Roland's using in all these new era products. And that way, uh, a program runs in the FPGA and tells it uh, a resistor and a capacitor and this, that, and the other, and so on and so forth, etc., etc. And that sort of makes up the circuit board of the keyboard that it's trying to emulate. And that's how these things are working, which I think is quite clever because, you know, you'd be able to do. All sorts. I mean, I don't know how many synthesizers and things Roland is planning on releasing on this plug-out capability. But, uh, you know, it could be endless. This could be a, quite a good investment, you know, and then you just have lots and lots of different plug-out synthesizers and drop in one after the other. And it weighs five and a half pounds in weight, the whole thing does. You know, to to clear a desk and have lots of synths in one little box, I think is a great idea. Unless you're the analog purists uh, who, you know, want the actual synthesizers. I mean, don't we all? We'd love to. But some of us who can just, you know, we get by because we, 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 you know, we, we just want to make a noise. We want to sound as close as without owning the actual sh101 or whatever something like this will do fine you know i bet you this is going to sound very close to the sh101 uh you know it's all the old case of when cds came out and people said mm, they don't sound the same as vinyl no they don't but they're close enough you know close enough for some people well i'm sorry about that i, I can't get underneath there to tell you what the FPGA chips are because I'm not going to unsolder it. Uh, it's not mine. It wouldn't be fair. However, I can take other bits and pieces apart. We can have a look around some of the other pieces. Right, I'm just going to take off one of these keys. That's easy. You have to sort of slide them forward and lift them up uh, because I just wanted to look how the contact was made underneath. And as you can see, it's got one of those double rubber plungers so it somehow measures the speed of you know the key whether you press it down soft or fast i don't know there's sort of one plunger hits before the other anyway these are uh, carbon 
plunge switches, carbon rubber switches. I don't know the proper word for them. It's all nicely sealed and things, so there shouldn't be any issue of dirt and crap getting under there. Yeah, they uh, they should probably last a while. Well, there's nothing else to really see in here. You know, the entire synthesizer is all there, and the uh, the good looking the good bits are underneath this copper plating which is soldered down I can't get to it. sorry about that I'm not going to take it apart uh, yeah keyboard ins and outs audios blah 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 but you know don't be put off there's more technology inside there there's more transistors and things inside there than what they used in 1969 to send uh, Neil Armstrong and his uh, mates up to the moon you know the, the techn technology and electronics is getting so tiny that <laughs> that's all you, yeah that's all you need it, it's crazy so moving on then we'll we'll have a look in here i've taken out the screws of this thing and we'll just have a flip this over and have a look yeah it's all just switch gear as i thought it would be here's some uh, faders uh the blue ones i think are the switches and the black ones are potentiometers. All these little tiny LEDs and things, and there's good old black squiggly lines, which are carbon tracks for these buttons, for the rubbery buttons anyway. And lots and lots of tiny green LEDs everywhere. Uh, yeah, it's as well made as anything is today, you know, bit of quality. It's, uh, it's nice and sturdy and what else can I say about it? I mean, yeah, there you go. That's that's all we've got to look at, really, inside there. Hmm, sorry. I'm going to screw it all back together again and just have a little play. We'll have a listen to some of the sounds on it, at least. So, sorry about that. I was hoping there would be valves in there. Or vacuum tubes. But there isn't. Right. Put it back together. Screwdriver time. Hmm. Not. Well, there you go. It's all back together and it's all working. And uh, it's not my fault. I didn't break it. I think it was meant to sound like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, nice. Different. Uh, I reckon it's going to make a lot of people happy, that is. It's so light. Five and a half pounds. Right, I'm going to plug this into the drum machine and the uh, bass and uh, I don't know, just have a couple of minutes playing about with it and just see what sort of sounds we get out of this thing. I kind of uh, think there's something missing here. Maybe a, a proper pitch bend. I mean, it says pitch bend on here. It doesn't sound like a pitch bend to me. Unless you're supposed to press a button somewhere to make it pitch bend. Hmm, I don't know. Pitch bend and scatter. So how do we make it into a pitch bend? Hello? No? Oh well, never mind. Alright, bear with me. I'm going to get the drum machine and see if I can do some of as a synthesizer, standalone, yeah, it's okay. It's uh, it's fun. It's groovy. It's uh, all those trendy words. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what it sounds like with the SH101, which comes out on the 25th of June, 2014, uh, which is tomorrow. Even though you might be watching this video in two weeks' time, so it'll be yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. But uh, on the SH101. You can set up your arpeggio by pressing certain keys in certain orders and, you know, you've made your arpeggio. On this I can't seem to figure that out. It's got arpeggio up and down and up and down. Uh, but I don't know how to actually program your own arpeggio. There must be a way of doing it. Especially if, they're in, if you're going to be able to import the SH-101, then that should be available on here. Uh, just a thought. If anyone gets the SH-101, let me know if you can uh, actually program your own arpeggio pattern. Because you can on the SH-101. And this is going to emulate the SH-101. So that would be an important thing. Hmm. 
Yeah. If you do get it and you uh, find out a way to do it, please let us know down there in the comments things because there's nothing in the leaflet that tells you how to do that. Well, I've plugged in the TR8 into the System 1 and uh, I'll just have a little faff about for a couple of seconds uh, just to run this video off and I'll just take the chance in saying thanks a lot for uh, watching the video and I hope there's some interest there. I'm sorry there wasn't a lot to look at in there but uh, yeah, we've seen it, we've seen inside it and I'm glad I got my hands on one. So, thanks for watching.